thank you for joining us today. As we talk about some things that I hope will be helpful to us, this is the sermon that is recorded for April the 26th. We thank you for joining us. The title for today is Good from Bad. The text is Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. Let's read it together. For we know that all fact earlier in the chapter, in verse 18, he had talked about the sufferings of this present time. He thought about those, all of the things that he had gone through. And he believed strongly that God was able to work in and through those things to bring about ultimate good. I want you to notice that Paul didn't say, I think. He said, I know. He didn't say that everything is good because some things are just bad. But Paul's confidence was that God was able to work in and through those things to bring about ultimate good. I say to us today that our confidence should be the same as Paul's. Things right now are not good. Things are bad. People are sick. People are dying. People are out of work. People are tired. People are frustrated. But I believe in the providence of God. I believe that God is still able to work in and through whatever we're facing to bring about good. Now, this does not mean that I understand all of the workings of God. To understand all of that, to know exactly what he's thinking and what he's doing, to know the mind of God, I would have to be God. All I know is what he reveals to me. And he has revealed to us in this passage, Romans 8, 28, that all things can work together for ultimate good. Another passage that... Uh, gives me a great deal of confidence at times like this, is Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Same author, the Apostle Paul, who said that we know that God is able to do, notice, exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Now sometimes the good that comes from bad can only be seen in the rearview mirror, so to speak, in retrospect. As I look back over my own life, there have been things that I thought at the time were very, very, very bad but now, I'm able to see, yes, they were bad, but some good came out of that. God was at work providentially in my life. And I will say that it may be that only eternity will reveal all of the good that comes from bad. In this life, we may never see it, but the promise is ultimately good can come from bad. So that brings us to a question, the real question of the day. What good can come from bad from this present situation? And you may say, well, nothing. Let me take you to a verse in the 119th Psalm. Notice the confidence of the psalmist in verse 71. It is good for me that I have been afflicted that I may learn your statutes. Now, what's wrong with the psalmist? What's he thinking? It's good for me that I've been afflicted. Who would ever think that affliction is good? Who would ever think that suffering is good? And yet the psalmist said, it was good for me that I was afflicted. Why? That I might learn your statutes. The psalmist realized that good came from bad. But let's be specific. Let's not just talk in a general way, but what are some things that are good that can 
can come from things that are bad. Number one, it can drive us to our knees. I expect that many of us have done more praying recently than we have in a long time. I think of the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 who had that thorn in the flesh. Now we like to debate what it was and we really don't know. The Bible doesn't say. But he prayed fervently three times that God would take away his thorn in the flesh. Now, God said no. God said you need that. It's to your benefit. And Paul was okay with that. But still he was driven to his knees because of suffering, because of affliction, because of things that were not good. Now we ought to pray all the time. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17, one of those little short verses, only three words, pray without ceasing. And we ought to pray all of the time, and not just during difficult times. But friends, there's nothing wrong with praying fervently during times like this. I have prayed fervently for my family and for myself. I have prayed that we would not be sick, that we would maintain our health, that we would somehow get through this situation. I don't think that's selfish. I expect you prayed for yourself and for your family as well. I pray for members of the Seymour Church. I love these people. And I don't want them to be sick. And especially there are some among us who are most at risk because of health issues, because of age, because of the inability to fight off things that come at them. I pray for those people by name, and I expect that many of you have as well. I pray for those who are on the front line of this pandemic, uh, those who are tired, those who have worked long hours that just drain them those who are brought face to face with the virus and wonder if they're going to be safe. I pray for all of those who are affected in any way by the coronavirus, those who have it, uh, those who are fighting it, those who are out of work, those who are in harm's way. And I have prayed that God in his providence would bring this deadly virus to an end. I have been driven to my knees, so to speak, in prayer. And that's one of the things that can come from a situation like this. It makes me say, God, I am not able to handle this on my own. God, I need you. I need your help. Philippians chapter 4, a tremendous passage that says this very thing. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Number two, good from bad, it can teach us patience. Now, I'm going to make an admission just here. Patience is not a natural attribute for Many of us. Many of us tend to be impatient. But when we have control over a situation, we should exercise that control. Uh, it doesn't do any good to ask God to do for us things that we can do for ourselves. And in regard to this pandemic, I encourage people, uh, practice social distancing. Wash your hands. Wear a mask if you're out around people. Don't take needless chances. There are things that you can do. But friends, there are things that we cannot do. There are things that are beyond our ability. I don't have any control over some things. And what I need to learn to do is sit quietly and wait. Well, that's hard for me. I expect that's hard for many of you who are viewing this uh, video it's hard for us to sit still and wait. Romans chapter 5, verses 3 and 4 reads as follows. We also glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, or patience, and perseverance, character, and character, hope. 
Now, what does Paul say? He said, I glory in my tribulations. Really? Why, Paul? Because tribulations can make me patient, can keep me going on, can help me persevere. And perseverance can build character in me, and character can give me hope. I like this particular say, I've used it often. Sometimes God calms the storm, and sometimes he lets the storm rage, and he calms us. Number three, good from bad, it can remind us to look up. Friends, we're creatures of this world. We live here, and most of us like it a lot. We like the things we have. We like the people around us. What if the world were perfect, though? What if there was nothing wrong? What if there were no trying times? Would we ever be reminded to look up? To see something that's better, something that is absolutely perfect, a place where all of the problems of life will never invade. Second Corinthians chapter 4, I want to read verse 18, and then go ahead to chapter 5 and read verse 1. For our light affliction, let me just pause and say, Paul, really? All of the things that you went through, you consider it light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. Paul says in comparison, what we're going through it right now is light affliction, and it won't last forever. And it's really working in us for something that's so better, so much better. And if this tent in which we live, this temporary house is destroyed, we have a building made by God, eternal in the heavens. And number four, and finally, good from bad, it can prepare us for greater service. The things that we must endure can often help us think of ways that we can help others who are enduring the same kinds of things. As is often stated, we are in this together. Now it's just not me and mine, but it's all of us. And we should ask the question, what can we do to be of service to others? And I'm so proud of many of the people that I know who are going beyond themselves to help others, whether it's making masks for people to wear, or sending cards, or encouraging emails, or doing videos to encourage. We have people who are saying, we are in this together. How can I help you? How can I be of service to you? How can I minister to you? And in reality, folks, we are all ministers. Our job is to help and serve others in the name of Jesus. Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning at verse 3, wrote, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our tribulation, listen, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Paul says God comforts us. God stands by us. God helps us. God encourages us so that we may do the same to others. We are blessed, even in bad times, to be a blessing. And the greatest service that we can do for anyone is to tell them about Jesus. To use opportunities like this in deed and in word to let them know that we are here we stand where we stand and we believe what we believe and we have the confidence that we have because of our relationship with Jesus Christ. When the early church suffered persecution and had to scatter, Acts chapter 8 and verse 4 says, 
And as they went, they preached. They shared the word. Even in the midst of persecution, they reached out to tell others about Jesus. Now I remind you in closing that the promise of Romans 8.28 is to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. That's just another way of saying Christians. This promise is to God's people. We know that all things work together for good to these people. And I'm a believer. I believe that God is alive and well and working in the lives of his people to bring about good from bad. And I tend to look at times like this as a time to learn, to learn to pray more, to learn to be patient and wait, to learn to look up, and to learn to serve others. Again, from Romans chapter 8, verse 18, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed to us. Thank you so much for spending these few minutes with us. You'll see my email address there on this slide, tom at seymourcoc.org. If we can help you in any way, just contact me. If you have a question or comment, We'd be glad to have those, but I thank you so much for spending this time with us today. May God bless you and keep you. Let's close with prayer. Father, we are thankful for these moments, for your providence, for the fact that you are with us and that you can bring good from bad, even though we don't always understand that. We believe it because of the testimony of your word. And now keep us in your care. Forgive us when we do those things that are wrong in your sight, for we pray it through Jesus' name. Amen.